Have you ever tried to please someone? Uh, you desperately hope that they're really going to be happy with what you've made for them, given them and so on. Um, sometimes we'll see this perhaps especially on things like the Bake Off, you know, where the contestants, after they've presented their whatever it is, creations that they've made, uh, they're petrified, waiting for the responses of the judges. Are they going to be pleased? Are they going to be satisfied? And then they start and they talk about, well, it could be a little bit more this, it could have been, it could have been. And then you can see their faces begin to uh, crumple a bit. But then occasionally, occasionally they then hear from the judges. Oh, wonderful. Perfection. And they're thrilled. You know, in this verse, we get someone who was absolutely thrilled. Someone who was overjoyed with what had been accomplished. And who was that? Let me read the verse. It's Ephesians 2, 16 today. And in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he, that's Jesus, put to death their hostility. What we have here is a description again of how Jesus is securing our peace, getting rid of the wall of hostility and so on between ourselves and God. He's reconciled, we read. In the original Greek, apparently, it, it, was, it, it really meant super reconciled because God the Father was super satisfied with his son's work on the cross. So perfect and so complete what Jesus did on the cross, even though it cost him everything, even to be forsaken by his father, to even end up giving up his life. And yet the father was fully satisfied. And so he's fully satisfied with accepting you and me into his family because of what his son, our saviour, has done. And what joy that should bring us to know that the work of Jesus on the cross is so perfect that it completely satisfies God. And so that our salvation in itself is perfect, is secure, is tight and assured for all eternity. What a saviour.